Hi, my name's Charlie. I'm the online editor for Tabletop Gaming, and I am new to D&D. Felt like a big secret that I hadn't played a role-playing game before, but what it's done is left me with a ton of questions. And all of those questions for a brand new person I've collated into some advice. The reason I'm doing this is because a lot of the advice that's out there is written by people who already know what they're talking about. Which makes sense, you need professionals in your field to tell you what it is that you're doing and how best to do it next. The problem is little niggly tricky bits or things we find a little bit difficult or daunting aren't necessarily addressed because you forget how scary it is to start off in the first place. So with that I've got a few tips for you, a few things that might help um, whether you're a brand new player or whether you're a DM looking to help your new players and wondering what it is that they might be worrying about. So without further ado, let's go with tip one. So the first thing to think about in contrast to what I've just said is that you don't need to know everything. You don't need to have seen every episode of Critical Role, you don't need to have read these back to back, you don't need to know everything because if you're a player your DM is going to take you on that journey. There's a lot to want to do. So I went into it wanting to know everything so that I wouldn't be anxious maybe when I started. I'd have an idea of what I needed to answer. And to an extent, those sorts of videos online are really helpful. There are books, there's fiction that you can read. There's all sorts of discussions about how to start. But really, the world is massive. D&D has been going for years. There is absolutely no way you can cram in knowledge of every character and every type and every piece of lore into your brain before you start playing D&D, and even during playing D&D. With that, things are going to change anyway. There's going to be new worlds opened, there's going to be new stories told, there's going to be new characters that you can be aware of. But your own D&D campaign may not mention those in the slightest. You may have a completely different adventure, all run by your DM, um, and a great way to sort of explore the world at your own pace and create your own stories, which is all we're really looking to do. With that, if you are a DM, the it's scary to start and it's scary to have to think about a lot of things, but a lot of DM is the confidence to sort of almost make it up on the spot. How many things can you do? The question I asked after my first D&D session was, how did you prep all of that? We did such mental things. And the response was just, I didn't, but I had a rough idea of what could happen. You took me by surprise by saying this, and we went in this direction instead, and I just filtered this in. It's practice to an extent with a DM, but as a player, it's hugely noted and enjoyed. So don't be daunted by how big the world is. You don't need to know a lot to start. Your DM is gonna teach you. And that's the same with the dice, which I'll go on to in a second. So for tip two, we're gonna talk about characters or who you're creating. So it may be that you've got everything sorted. You found your DM, he might be one of your friends, he or she might be one of your friends. It may be people that you found online through Facebook or Discord, um, but you're ready to go. You've got your Tuesday night meets, you've got everything set up. And then the DM says to you, you need to build a character and you go I have absolutely no idea how to do that which is the response that I had with some mutterings of sort of ah, how do I do this now D&D Beyond makes things a little bit easier it's a website you can go to that lets you sort of pre-fill your character you'll click I want this I want this and it will say you also need to select these you do have pre-filled character sheets that you can download from D&D directly or if you want to build them you can go through that process with D&D Beyond which is basically fill in everything it asks for. If something goes wrong it's not a problem either your DM will pick up on it or you play that way and then you learn what's wrong with that character or what you don't like about that character. But the tips that I really wanted to give are to go in reverse from what they expect. So they tell you to pick your race then your class and then your sort of additional parts of that. I found it much, much easier, and it's the reason I'm sharing this tip, to look at who I wanted to play and work backwards. So I knew I wanted to be quite sneaky, but I also knew I wanted to uh, use magic. And so that led me down the path of a Eldrin elf with a arcane trickster specialty. So those sorts of things make it much easier. The other part of that is knowing who your character is going to be and the way that you want to play. Now I watched a video that recommended looking at rogues for example, which is how I play, as sort of the hand solo of the game. But once I had an idea of what hand solo was like and I knew I wanted to play that way, picking a rogue was much easier. You can go completely to the other extreme. I've seen a recent one that I thought was fabulous with Legally Blonde. So Elle from Legally Blonde is a bit of an airhead but she goes, she's 
dumped by her boyfriend. She goes to Harvard Law School um, and she sort of proves herself better that she can she can be a lawyer at the end of it. Um, that translated rather beautifully into a D&D character by being a wizard who studied because her boyfriend dumped her um, and she was going to be the best wizard she possibly could be, but was a little bit of an airhead as it went on. It's a really fun character to play and that also leads into the fact that you should really consider what your flaws are because the flaws are quite often the fun part. In my case, for the character I've got at the moment, I have a love of animals. It means that there are, when there are monsters in combat, I am pretty useless. If the goblins are riding wargs, for example, I'm the one throwing the rations in my turn to try and tempt the wargs over. It's frustrating in a way for the other characters, but it's also funny with the results, especially when they come out with random names. Um, I still RIP Sandra the Warg, who did not make it and also did not accept my rations as help. The third tip I'll give or thing to consider is that you play completely by your own rules. There is a reason why the word homebrew content exists. If you enjoy a certain way of playing, play it that way. There's a couple of reasons for this. So firstly, there is nothing more satisfying than DM saying to you, I'll allow it because it's funny. And if you're laughing with your friends, you're enjoying what you're doing. It's a rule of our encounters that if it's not fun, we don't play it. We don't sit together for three hours every Tuesday so that we can be very solemn and very serious about the rules. We sit there so that we can laugh with friends and have an in-joke about how one of us is always the one that's captured. So all those sorts of little things tie into your fun experience. There are gatekeepers that are always going to be, I say this, there's always one and there is always one that will correct you and say you can't do this in D&D or we don't play it that way or the rule suggests that you do it this way. But the whole point of D&D is to have fun, to be comfortable and to enjoy what you're doing. If you can encourage that within your group, you're going to have a great time and that's the whole point. Don't play it if it's not fun. Allow yourself to have those little extra things that you like including that maybe aren't in the rules. They may be in the rules or you may not know but make sure that you have fun when you're doing what you're doing. For tip four, I'm saying starting is easier than it sounds. You may watch a ton of videos and nine times out of 10, they'll start by showing you the dice and then they'll start saying, we have a set of seven polyhedral multi-sided dice which allow you to use your encounters. And I don't know about you, but my brain switches off and says, math rocks, I don't understand and I don't like them. If you actually look at them, it's really simple. You've got a 20 sided dice. That's going to be called a D20. The reason you have different dice for your combat or for your actions is to try and make it so that the odds change. Now, the DM is also going to be rolling dice. He's going to have a number. Those things are going to be like, you need to roll a 15 in order to hit who it is that you're trying to hit. If you roll a 16, fabulous. If you roll a 10, you don't. But your level of chance changes. Now that also changes when you have things like hit points, so you roll as to whether you're going to manage to attack them or whether they're going to move out of the way at the last minute, um, and then how vicious that attack is. So when you have things like critical hits, which is rolling a 20, those ones are usually very dramatic and quite often you can have a say in quite how dramatic those go. Remembering that it's storytelling, remembering you can have fun with it, but it does feel when you're in the middle of combat a little bit like being in an action movie. When you look at D&D and its explanations of things like spells and attacks, it will quite often say this is something like a 1d6 damage plus 1d12 or 5d12 or any of those. And all they're saying is roll five dice that are 12 sided and add those together. And that's how much you're going to get to attack. It looks intimidating, but it isn't. It's much easier than you think. And also by watching those videos, as confusing as they'll be, a little bit will sink in and you'll remember this. Your DM will guide you through a lot of this anyway, um, or if you are DMing, you'll see this come up often enough that you'll, you'll have it in mind quite easily to then call forward. It should be quite fun, it should be quite straightforward, and then after a while you'll know exactly what those additional tips and hits are. And so my next tip is that starting is easier than it sounds and dice are less intimidating than you think. First of all, they're incredibly shiny, which makes them great fun to collect and take a look at, but actually they have a proper role within D&D and there's always a little bit of concern. What happens is when you start watching videos on starting D&D, they'll always come up with, we start with seven polyhedral multi-sided dice. It's not untrue. However, it's tricky to then wrap your brain around it. I hear that and then I hear math rocks and then I panic and then I worry that I'm gonna to have to do simple sums that I might get wrong. It's easier than it sounds. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna be asked maybe to roll a D20 
all that means is the dice has 20 sides. It's as simple as that. Now with a slightly larger one, when you're rolling, you may find that you roll a 20. All that means is it's a critical hit. It's probably going to do really well on any damage or any attacks that you want to run from them. Now your DM will tell you when to roll the dice, but most simply it's when you're doing something that requires a skill. So it might be a perception check, for example, and the DM will have had in his head or rolled a dice to confirm that a 10, rolling a 10, will be sufficient for you to see that the enemy is going to attack you. If you roll, say, a 9, you're going to miss that chance, and it means that you're not going to be aware of it coming up. Your DM will tell you when you need to roll your dice. That may be for a skills check, such as perception, and all that will mean is that they will have a number in mind for you to succeed and a number in mind for you to fail. So if he rolls, for example, a 10 on the skill check and you roll an 11, you'll see that enemy approaching if it's a perception check. If you don't roll that, if you roll a 9, you're not going to see that enemy approach and it's, life is going to be a lot more difficult for you. Sometimes that's half the fun. But these dice, the d20s, are your most commonly used ones because these will be how you move around the world. The other part of that is, in addition, you'll have your attacks that are reliant on rolls. Now, if they say it's going to be a d12 for damage, again, all you're going to be rolling is a dice with 12 sides. It's as simple as that. So one of these, or one of these, or any of these, depending on what you're doing, depending on what you're looking for, will give you the outcome of your attack, your movement, anything like that. So your first one will be, are you going to hit it? And then the second one will be, yes, I've hit it. How much damage am I going to do? And that damage itself can be great when you get a critical hit, which again, is just a 20, the highest number you can get. If you manage a critical hit, usually that's going to be quite a interesting kill. It's going to be something that's you're maybe going to have a hand in saying how this is going to happen and it's going to feel very cinematic after you've done rounds of battle and you finally get that amazing critical hit in at the last minute you're going to be celebrating with your friends as to how you've done it and that's all it is with dice you'll be told when you need to roll them you'll be told which ones to roll and you'll be told how many of them to roll so a 4d6 damage will be rolling your d6 four times add those together and that gives you how much damage you're going to be doing it's as simple as that. Much less intimidating than it first sounds, and again, your DM will tell you what you need to know. So the final tip that I have for you, and one that I've had to learn the hard way, is that you don't need loads of stuff to play D&D. It's all there available to you. You can get it on the internet, uh, you can play with your friends through sort of word of mouth, you can be taught it with nothing at all. The dice are optional because you can still use things like online dice rollers, um, you can play your game through online, you don't have to buy everything. However, Having said that, if there are things that you want to get started and you want that support in the same way that I did, if you're playing with a whole group of brand new people, a whole new DM, something like the Essentials Kit or the Starter Kit is a great place to go. The Starter Kit has the benefit of including things like your player sheet, but you can get those online. So your character can be pre-built for you, but included online. However, it comes with those shiny dice, it comes with a DM screen, it comes with uh, some extra info and some spell cards. So it's worth taking a look at if you want that sort of level of, here's what I know what I need to be doing. If your DM knows what they're doing and you're just entering as a player in the same way I did, something like the Player's Handbook will give you the support that you need just to have a look through. And I love the Monster Manual because it means after every encounter, I can go and have a look and see what I thought they looked like in comparison to what they do look like. Again, having said that, because D&D is all about storytelling, it's the storytellers and the creators that play it, which means there's some amazing things out there. There's some beautiful artwork that you can collect. There are things that you can build yourself um, and all sorts of things that you can play with. And that's the whole way through I've been saying that D&D is all about having fun. So if you want to sort of embellish your character, write stories about your character, those sorts of things are hugely incorporated and loved within the D&D world. So make sure that you're having fun while you do it, make sure you're enjoying yourself, um, but you don't need lots of things to start. You can always build this up later if you want to. 
hopefully those tips are helpful to you. It's all about just going in and trying it and seeing what you come out with. Your storytelling is going to go leaps and bounds if you just embrace the fact that you may not know everything to start with. Uh, your DM will take you through your stories or you'll have great fun pulling your characters through those stories as the DM. The more fun you have, the better. Um, and with that, I'd love to hear any stories that you have of starting out, of your characters you're creating, anything that you're doing new with D&D that you're excited about, let us know. The community is incredibly welcoming. You can ask those questions. We'll come back to you. And if we don't know the answer, someone else will. It's all about conversation and we'd love to hear from you. So I hope this helps. I hope you enjoy your adventures and hopefully you'll be off telling stories in no time. <laughs>